Yo, Elliot, I would like to hear you speak about how important it is for a man to be aggressive in acquiring resources for his family and why is that important? I noticed this guilt in me. This was a communist country 30 years ago and most people around me, when they see someone rich, they say he's a thief, basically. So I guess this guilt comes from fear of judgment. Many people seek, uh, speak like someone owes them something. And so that is typical in what would be a communist country. And that's kind of how our culture is going these days. And so even in the United States, you still have this sentiment that if you are hustling, you're working hard, you're going and grinding and trying to get something great because you know you can, there are those that will denigrate you. And so why is it important? You know, I've been thinking a lot about this lately too as I have 10X'd my goals and have decided to step up because it's time for me to go to the next level in many regards in my life. As I've built one level, you know, you get to the next and you gotta level up. And there was a time where I was content, but that season has ended. And I think life happens in seasons, at least it, is, it does for me. And so uh, to be completely frank, I've been listening to Grant Cardone. He's got this one book called Be Obsessed or Average. And if I, even a year ago, I would have been like, that sounds like a headache. And so I wouldn't have listened to it, but I'm in a different phase right now. And so I'm listening to it, I'm like, this guy is on point. And so I would highly suggest you listen to that. Big shout out to Grant Cardone. But let me relay some of the sentiment and why it rings so true with me and why it might do the same for you. Listen, bro, you have a potential. We all have a potential. I have a potential, you have a potential. Every man on this call has a potential. Why would we live our lives being less than our potential? In fact, it is almost sinful to live your life below the capacity that God has given you. God has given us various gifts. The reason why he gives you gifts is not so those gifts can hide in the closet. Even in the Bible, I think St. Paul says, no one lights a candle and hides it under the table. There's a certain light within you that must shine in order for you to fulfill your divine obligation here on this planet in this time by maximizing all God has given you. And if you play less than your ability when you come to your judgment, I think God's gonna look, us, look at us like, you wasted a lot of time, bro. There was a whole lot you could have created. There was a lot that you could have achieved. There were people you could have helped. There were just a whole bunch of great stuff that could have flowed through you, but you blocked it. You got in the way because you were afraid of what people would say. And that's one of the greatest things, one of the biggest things that will delay us in our life is human respect. That's a sin. That's one of the things that block us from our blessings is human respect waiting and wanting for others to validate us rather than opening ourselves up to the grace of God and allowing him to work miracles through us. Jesus even says this, right? And I'm, I'm using religious uh, uh, sentiment and perspectives too so that the guilt can go away in you. Why would Jesus say you will do works like this and greater. Jesus was creating miracles. He was doing miracles, right? I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm not a Bible bumper. I don't know the Bible back and front, but I remember these stories. And so I think that was the point, right? Jesus spoke in parables. He told stories. And so I remember a lot of the stories about Jesus. And one of, one of the things that happened with Jesus in his life is he was known for uh, doing miracles. He was healing people. He would heal people. He would do amazing things, right? But he didn't just do these miracles and then just say, hey, fellas, check this out, bang, and then tell everybody, I wish, you, I wish you could, I bet you wish you could. No, Jesus was like, he almost, I think he almost was like shaking his head at us, you know, and you know, the disciples and, and the people at the time, they represent us. And he would be like, man, you guys are so doubtful. And he would, he would say, you can do this, you can do this, bro. And he said this, and one of his, you know, one of the Bible guys, you can put, a, put the quote because you know it. You will do better than this. You will do more than this. You will do more than me. But, bro, check out how many of us hold ourselves so low that we don't even come close 
to what Jesus says is possible in us. There should be a sense of guilt for not maximizing our potential. Not being and creating and being generative to the capacity that God has given you gifts for. I would also add this, that this sense of guilt could be justified if what we're doing is for self-aggrandizement. Who can argue with a man who's maximizing his potential, making millions of dollars, but for what? For the glory of God. How much more useful are you as a man and as a, as a, a signpost, a symbol, a shining star for God than by being the best that you can be rather than holding yourself low? You mentioned here also, I would like to hear what you have to say about aggressiveness in acquiring resources for your family. This, that is your responsibility to be aggressive in requiring resources for your family because above and beyond even the business that we're in, our vocation as men is as fathers and husbands. And so it is incumbent upon us, it is divine justice, it is only just for us to protect and provide. That's, that's our job. That's what we're here for. When you create a family, when you take a wife, and especially when you start making children, it is, and this is so funny because the feminists love to you know, say that women who stay at home are somehow oppressed. They're so silly. <laughs> the women that are outside, working outside the home, they're the ones that's oppressed. Because it's a man's, it's a man's responsibility, but it's also a woman's right. Check this out. This is, this is Catholic theology stuff or, or moral law stuff. I learned a lot of this from Father Ripperger. He says that it is a woman's right. It is her right. It's not a luxury. It is her right as the bearer of children to be allowed, to be given the space to raise her children. But doesn't that just seem so basic? Think about like any animal, any, any animal people recognize, oh, she, that dog just gave birth. She should have the room to care for that dog, that puppy, right? Give, give the baby some time with the mama, but not, not us. So, what, right, baby popped out, that baby pop out, you better go back to your tax slave job. Otherwise, you know, you, uh, there's something wrong with you. I was having, Colleen and I was having dinner. We, well, we went to dinner by ourselves, but then we went to this fundraiser. Well, every once in a while, we just go to these like freedom rally fundraiser stuff in our county just to support these candidates that are, you know, aiming for freedom, you know, medical freedom mainly. You know, that's one of the things we want to maintain in our, in our, in our state. And we was having, we were just having a conversation with this couple. They was a silly ass couple. They were funny. We just, we just sat there and listened to them. And so, you know, they have a lot of the same values as us, but they're not living the same way. And I don't, listen, I'm blessed. I, I mean, I work hard. I still work hard. But I'm blessed. I know that, that this is by the grace of God. Everything, everything in my life is by the grace of God. But uh, I was listening to this couple, and they had the same values as us, but they weren't living the same way. And one of the things that the guy was saying, and he, it just tripped me when he did this. We were talking about homeschooling. And, uh, you know, we made quite a bit of a sacrifice, a big sacrifice, given our culture, uh, a sacrifice. To me, it don't, even make, it don't even seem like a sacrifice. Sending your wife out to work, that's not like a sacrifice to me. You're sacrificing your wife to all kinds of bad stuff out there. That's why there's so much, when, that's why there's so much uh, infidelity. You hear these people who have like their work, their work husbands and shit like that, my work wife and stuff like that. Women don't belong in the workplace. They belong at home, especially if they're mamas. But anyway, so, you know, we made some sacrifices to keep my wife at home. And so I'm listening to this guy. We're talking about, my wife is talking about homeschooling, how much she loves it and stuff. And this guy had the nerve to turn and look at his wife and say, you need to start homeschooling. And like, you know, the lady's like, oh, she's like, oh, she's feeling guilty about herself. He's like, and then he looks at me and my wife and says, can you guys please convince her to homeschool? 
And then my and then my question was, wait a second, didn't you say that she works full time, bro? Yeah, but I was like, wait, well, yeah, but what? How you expect your wife to take care of the kids, raise the kids, and teach the kids, and you got her out there on the streets working for dollars? So Nemjama, you talk about aggressively acquiring resources for your family. That's not that's not arbitrary. That's not um a, a a, a sort of like um, a goal or, or a pleasurable thing for you to go do because it's fun. That's what you must do. You must do that. You must maximize your potential as a man and use all the gifts that God have given you and to two main ends, fulfilling your main vocation as father and husband. That's your number one vocation as a man. My number one vocation isn't Yo Elliot on YouTube. My number one vocation isn't training you guys in this program. My number one vocation is husband and father. That's your number one vocation as a man. Everything that you do is meant to support that and you want to do it well. But that's even that subservient to glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. I'm not up here uh, proselytizing in my videos very much at all, but I wear my heart on my chest, on my sleeve. And so, you know, you, all you gotta do is look around old Uncle E, look at what he's wearing and what he's got around him, and you know what he's glorifying. I'm glorifying the Lord, I got St. Peter, I got uh, um, uh, Joseph, St. Joseph behind me over there. Look. I love, that's my favorite picture. That's my favorite picture. I love that picture. It's called Terror of Demons. St. Joseph, the terror of demons, holding baby Jesus with his hand up and his foot on a demon, his foot on a dragon. That's your vocation as a man. Protect that baby, protect that life, and stomp on Satan in their life. And then I got the perfect man above, Jesus Christ. And so I glorify the Lord in, the, in these ways, right, by, by just even the way I live my life and, what, and I share my sentiments. And, you know, I'm not trying to justify myself here, but I say the same to you. Always glorifying the Lord. You coming from a communist country, you got a double, you got a double edge against you. Number one, there's no impetus, there's no supporting sentiment behind striving to be the best God has made you to be. And number two, there's no God, because the only way for atheism to work, communism to work, is if there's atheism. So you got a, a sort of a double, you got sort of a double edge against you, bro. But don't let that slow you down. Listen to this book uh, by Grant Cardone, Obsessed or uh, Average. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. That guy is, he's got a lot of energy. He's an old man, too. I think he's like in his 60s. And I'm listening to him. I'm like, this guy got me fired up. And he tell, the half the book is about how people in your life are not gonna understand when you're aggressively acquiring resources, like you said, when you're going hard, right? And it's so funny too, because I've really had to ponder this in my life recently as well, right? Because I had been content for a while, and then I got a fire under my ass. And I look and I think that, for me, it's not even the money. The money is a scorecard that's telling me how well I'm serving. That's the way I see it, right? Like the money is an arbitrary number. You get to a certain point, right? And I'm not saying that I'm floating, swimming in dollars, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. But my goal, very high up there, it's very high up there. But for, but, to, but for what? Because it forces me to grow. It will force you to grow. Set high goals and you'll be forced to grow. So my bro, that's what I got to tell you. That's my opinion on that. Don't let these people judgment. Don't let the don't be afraid of the judgment of men. These are weak people. They're small people. They're sad people. They're underperforming people. These are people who will suffer in this life and the next, but not you, my bro. You're going to do you're going to fulfill all you're going to use all gifts God has given you and glorify him along the way, dude. Done. Are you tired of meeting low quality women that can't cook, clean, or carry laundry? Do you value alpha excellence but seem to only attract low value girls? 
Relationships today are tougher than ever for any man with traditional standards. Sweet, submissive, feminine women seem to be a thing of the past, but not for me and my friends and our wife-worthy women. But this is not by mistake or luck. We live by principles. So our lives and our wives reflect that commitment. GTGFL, get the girl for life, is not just a mindset for attracting and keeping a loyal girl hooked on you for life. It is a lifestyle. Discover the four GTG units for masculine magnetism, authentic approach, positive leadership, and enduring attraction by clicking the link in this video to master my get the girl for life principles on the next page. This could be the difference between boredom and divorce or laying down that girl that adores you for life. See you on the inside.